Hey y'all, this is Culture Soup, where tech, culture, and business collide. It's a podcast that spoons up everything hot from social media. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, and each episode we bring you some of the most notable and not yet notable thought leaders in tech, business, and culture. The year was 2017 and I was about the business. One part of the business that was important to the big company was managing and fostering relationships with some of the top media in order to get our message across. Sometimes I would go on these desk side briefings. Some of the time it was a lot more informal. Sometimes a little coffee, sometimes a little dinner, but something to kick off a relationship and begin to nurture it. This time I would go to New York and I was in New York about two or three times a year because it is the number one media market. And this time I stopped in a little cafe in Brooklyn and met with a woman named Abby West. Abby was a traditional journalist turned digital audio content programmer. And she was still new to the role and I was still trying to understand how we might be able to work together. Abby was at Audible and she came from Essence, People Magazine and Entertainment Weekly. So I was interested to know what we could do with Audible. Audible, as I would come to know, was all about audiobooks. So I wasn't quite sure how we might be able to partner, but we maintained our relationship. In fact, Audible does more today than it ever has before. In addition to original content, they also host podcasts. So Abby today is the head of multicultural creators and programming for Audible. And it's an exciting mix of what she's done before in the past and actually what is coming in the future. It's the sound of the future. Are you listening? Let's get it. Hey everybody, I'm so excited to have Abby West on with me. Abby is the head of multicultural content and programming at Audible. And I'm proud to say that my content lives on Audible too. Hey Abby. Hey Michelle, how are you? I'm good. You know, it's no secret. I, I let folks know why the show didn't happen. And <laughs> life. You let them know that life happened. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. and it, when what did I say? When your tech uh gives you the business. <laughs> it's a mess. But we got it all resolved. I had to do some upgrades. And I'm so happy that you had the patience to uh, re-record because we had a great interview, but it just didn't curl over right. (laughs) I mean, we could make magic happen twice. That's what we do. That's what we do. You know, I'm so happy to have you on, um, Abby, and we're going to talk about how the culture of sound is changing the way we take in content, but we're also going to talk about how culture is impacting sound. And how, you know, folks out there like you and me are taking it in. Yeah. yeah. You know what? And without further ado, what, what do you say we have a culture soup moment? Let's go for it. Awesome. Okay, great. So I'm always scouring the feeds and seeing what people are talking about on social media. And more so, too, I look at the kinds of content that communities are connecting around. And I'm seeing more and more that video is definitely important. But audio is taking over as the new content that's blowing up all over the place. What are you seeing as the reason for that? Well, I mean, I think it's it's no secret. We it's how we really primarily communicate with people, right? We listen, we hear, we connect. And audio has always been one of the most intimate forms of entertainment Mm -hmm. uh, and of communication and, and hearing. Like what is better than being in someone's ear? and feeling like you're really getting to immerse yourself in the story in a different way than than you do when you're reading a physical book or watching something on television or in the movie. Um, You know, we we have imagination. We have always pulled from what we're hearing and envisioned it and immersed ourselves in that way. And so it's no surprise that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not having a moment. It's always had a moment. Right. You know, it's, if we go back to oral storytelling is, is the start of everything for us. So, you know, they, they say everything old is new again, plus 
every time something new comes in, there's the tendency to say, well, that's going to shut out the old. There's room for so much. <laughs> there's no need. It's not a zero sum game. There's no need to say this means you don't get to do the other. This is for everything. This is where we all come together and you could feel, you could dabble in in listening to a new uh, audiobook, a new audio adventure, new audio entertainment, um, and from the many different formats that there are, and still read something and still watch. Like there are 24 hours in the day. I think we can do many things. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's interesting in the monologue, I talk about when we met back in what? 2016, 2017, something like that in New York. Um, Audible was, yeah, Audible was really just known for audiobooks, but you guys have more content than that. Yeah, it's, you know, it's been, it's a 20 20 plus year old company that has innovated from from the outset and have one of the first audio players before even the iPad. Mm. It's been an innovator forever. And um, one of the next, one of the bigger steps we've taken in the last few years is really having Audible Originals, including um, content from a wide array of authors and across all kinds of genres and formats and really getting to share more. You know, again, there's just so many stories to be told. There's yeah. not one set and there can't be only one set of gatekeepers. Yeah. And you're in charge of multicultural. So tell me about the relationship between multicultural audiences and the creators and the storytellers and sound. I mean, multicultural um, audiences and creators, that's that's just who we are. And I said, we, we joked before about life just happening. That's life in America, in the world in 2022, is uh, increasingly diverse uh communities like Mm -hmm. and and constant growth and change and we've seen and i I don't know why people are constantly surprised i feel like we've been having the same conversation for 20 or 30 years that oh my gosh people like to see themselves represented in the content that they consume (laughs) it's amazing wow purchase power and that they you know they drive culture Mm -hmm. and that's something that i think has been that has been documented more recently but i think we've always known that um, un- so-called underrepresent- underrepresented groups and communities have always driven culture. Yeah, it is. You know, there has been a dominant narrative, but then the life that actually builds community is not one thing. And so, having uh, people really see that now, and we, I work with an amazing group of content creators and content folks at Audible who seek out foster, create, and amplify a diverse uh, creators and voices and narrators and performers and narratives, which is something I'm really passionate about because we all, you know, for each underrepresented group, there's sometimes a sense that there's one narrative and that's not the case. We know that. We know the conversations we have in in barbershops and hair, hairdressers and in family rooms and communities all the time. There's more than one narrative. So I've been really blessed, had the pleasure and privilege of getting to help find new creators, suss out uh, slates and and work with these folks at Audible who really know how to tell stories and help to foster that. And that's just delightful. Yeah, it sounds exciting. For those of us that aren't as familiar with the Audible platform that, you know, just think audiobooks, Tell us about some of the different kinds of packaged content that you guys produce. Oh, there's so many. And I, I think there's, you know, there's absolutely this, the audiobook that you're familiar with, with the beats and patterns of a traditional book and chapters. And there are, of course, podcasts, which also everyone's become more and more familiar with that can come in different formats. They're not simply always going to be a, a uh, what they call conversational pieces where there are two people in conversation and there's lots of scripted podcasts. There's lots of fiction and uh, different kinds of narratives. Um, we also have our words of music slate, which is an opportunity for various um, musical artists to tell stories in different ways. You know, right. One of the ones we've just recently launched was major frequency with major. And that's um, more in a, wellness space and mm-hmm. and you know there are other we've had uh, uh so many people who have blanking at the moment. <laughs> it's okay 
<laughs> um, Tariq Trotter uh, had, from The Roots had seven years where he talked about his creative process. We've had uh, so many different kinds of, of artists and not just one genre, not one space uh, and across socioeconomic backgrounds talking about not just their journeys, but specific storytelling moments that can mm -hmm. be woven through with their music. We also have our Audible Theater program, which uh, gives uh, diverse playwrights a chance to really shine. Some of them have uh, even been put um, on in our Audible Mineta Theater in New York. But it's been a, an amazing way to democratize theater because not everyone can get to New York right. or get even go out to play, even in your cities across the, uh, across the country and across the globe. So this has been a way to really bring this array of narratives and storytelling to everyone in a way that feels accessible. Well, and tell us how you work with creators because I think too, the common knowledge is Audible host content, but you guys are actually working with creators to create content. Can you talk about some of your originals? Yeah, I mean, some of the ones I just mentioned were Audible originals that mm -hmm. we have, you know, it's a, it's a mix of different ways they come about between pitches and, and conversations and, and partnerships. We recently announced a partnership with Issa Rae's um, audio company. Oh, wow. We're going to have lots of content coming from them as well. You know, there it, we've had originals with Kevin Hart, with Chisa Hutchinson, uh, Stacey Ann Chin. Um, you know, there are lots of things that are there are lots of paths, shall we yeah. say, to it. And, you know, the, we work very collaboratively. There's either, there's either a pitch process or a, or a development process. There are lots of different ways to come at it. Well, and that's interesting. You named a lot of names that are very prominent. Do you have to be a superstar to get engaged with Audible in this way? No, no. One of the other things we do is really try, you might, our, our, um, our founder has a way of talking about Voices that should be heard, voices that are, you know, out, that are not the bold-faced names that you expect, not the Kevin Hart's, but they're also up-and-comers that, or, or just not really broadly known. And I won't even mm -hmm. say necessarily up-and-comers, like Chista Hutchinson, who I mentioned, is a great playwright who is, may not be a household name, but should be heard. Right, <laughs> voices right. Should be heard. Um, we just, uh, we just published a. Uh, self-development title called Mastering the Skill of Reinvention by Coach Pamela Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Now, she is a master in her space, but not necessarily a household name, but you need to hear. She's the yes. real deal, right? Mm -hmm. So th what we are doing is trying to, um, you know, work with the, the really big name partners as well, because there's a lot of content that they are bringing to the table and storytelling and ways of approaching things that we really want to share, as well as fostering and elevating, amplifying these other voices that, again, you need to hear. Yeah, yeah. You know, just this weekend, my daughter started tracking her book, which is a children's book, No Thanks for Girls, Seven mm -hmm. Ways to Say I'm Beautiful, Strong, and Enough. And it was just awesome to hear her little voice saying her words. Mm -hmm. And I want you to speak to the power of that. You know, I make a couple cameos because... Chloe, the main, uh, Sophie, I'm sorry, Sophie, the main character, has some interactions with her mom in the book. And so when her mom shows up, you hear my voice too. But talk about the power of hearing the author's voice. And I do realize that there are narrators that, mm -hmm. that do read some of these books that aren't the author, but the power of when the author's voice is put to these words. I mean, what what greater connection is there really with your audience, right? You, yeah. you being seen in a in you know seen and heard in a different yeah. way. They're connecting with you both by the words that you're speaking and the way that you're emoting. You're opening yourselves in a different way. And every I, I've had the good fortune of talking to a lot of authors who have recorded their own work, and almost to a, t a, a person, they say it they had a different experience narrating their work than oh, they yeah. writing it, right? And oh, I think yeah. you can agree when you did your book as well. Yes. You're, you're experiencing it differently than even the way you thought it, the creation, development, and editing process. This was wholly different. Well, it totally was. And it was interesting because I just thought, here I am going to read the book, right? <laughs> but you bring the inflections based on your experience, especially if you're reading something that is nonfiction and true to you, right? Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. I found it to be very cathartic. And after I would finish a chapter or something or some segment, I literally being the closeted introvert that I am had to go gather myself mm -hmm. because it was it was ministering to me in a way yeah. <laughs> that I hope that it would come across to my audience. So, yes, that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's the power. That's the mm -hmm. power right there. Um, uh, taking well written well-structured storytelling and putting a human emotion. Uh, you know, we have so many performers, so many narrators who uh, you couldn't tell people that they weren't listening to 10 people doing this yeah. book because they're <laughs> so talented. Um, and that is, again, part of the entertainment and, and the, the value there. They're skills that yeah. just enrich people. You know, lives. you mentioned Papa Pope, Joe Norton. Voicing whose book was it? That's Tana Hasi Coates' book. Yes, um, yes. Water Dancer. I believe it's Water Dancer. I have to double check. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, and and how exciting to hear that voice that people have become very familiar with mm -hmm. in a different genre altogether. Yeah. Put his acting skills behind it. You know, he was a senator. He was a senator <laughs> on a different world. <laughs> yes. Everybody yeah. knows Papa Pope. Mm -hmm. But great. Listen, let's talk a bit about your journey to this role, because you came from the same background as me. I'm an ex-journalist, but you were working for People and Entertainment Weekly and even Essence. And then one day you were kind of looking for the next next. And this opportunity kind of showed itself. And what, what were your thoughts about it then? Um, unfortunately, my thoughts were the same as so many other women, which was that, oh my gosh, I don't check all the boxes on mm -hmm. this see, on this um, requirements list. Uh, even though I had people who were pushing me to, t to, to go after the job who wholeheartedly believed that it was for me, it took a bit for me to see myself in it. And then it took talking to the folks going on the, the first interview loop and going, oh yeah, this actually speaks to all the skill sets that I, and the things that I love, you know, the creation at the time it was creating, um, helping to form this editorial group. And, you know, it, it was part and parcel with what the way my whole career journey has gone, mm -hmm. where you know I started off in newspapers before the magazines and had to realize that it wasn't so much the medium. Mm -hmm. It was, the storytelling, yeah. you know, and even when it was, you know, covering for selectmen meetings in Connecticut or, you know, board of ed meetings somewhere or uh, true crime at people or celebrity at entertainment weekly, or, you know, any of the things it was sharing information in an entertain, entertaining and timely way. You know, mm -hmm. if I had to boil it down to three things mm -hmm. and that boiled down to storytelling. So when yeah. I was, you know, getting to spend my days working on storytelling, <laughs> sign me up. Well, and you know, you mentioned something to me too about pulling together your resume and looking at all of your skills and not being able to see the forest for the trees. Yeah. Talk to me about that moment when someone else kind of said, "Hey." Yeah, I mean, that's that's. Uh, being a journalist was always what I wanted to do in my life, you know, and, and being able to switch between newspapers to magazines to digital felt like a triumph and it was a triumph. Um, but as you know, as we all know, the journalism industry um, was suffering and it was painful at that mm -hmm. point. It was a lot of clickbait chasing. Um, it was hurting my soul to some degree and I knew I wanted to pivot and I couldn't see the way. And um, mm -hmm. there was a woman named Cheryl Hilliard Tucker, who was at uh, Time Inc., who was a great mentor to me and helped me look at my resume instead of in terms of chronological order of jobs and by skill sets. Because when you want to change industries, you really just need to be able to show how you can take what you know yes. and do so well, apply it to something that will not have the same title at all. Because we, and that's where we all get hung up on that, oh, what? What's the direct correlation to right. reporter or mm -hmm. editor? And they're in corporate, they call it so many different other things, but the job is the same. It really is. Yeah. And so that seeing that was like a light, it was a game changer for me. It's so important. And I deal with my clients, mostly
corporate executives, but some small business owners that tend to tie themselves to their title. And they just don't know how that tethers them Mm -hmm. from the ability to blossom in their real value. So I try to get them to, to say in one sentence what value they bring, what problem they solve and break out of the sheer title, because that in and of itself can limit you. And it sounds like you were experiencing that before somebody kind of nudged you. Yeah, it was it was a it was a little shake. Um, and, it, you know, I've been I've been really intent on giving that same shake to a lot of my f- former colleagues from the journalism world where because the skills you create, you foster as a journalist are so applicable everywhere else. <laughs> the critical thinking, just, yes, you forget how many people can't really form sentences the way we do, <laughs> you know, just simply things that you take for granted, your ability to find source information to, you know, uh, follow your gut sense and tell a story yeah. is, is massive. And I mentioned to you, too, how many people have said to me, I can't believe how you have completely gotten into a totally different career. And I'm like, how can you say that? (laughs) I'm doing everything, my skills, you know, that I've honed over the last almost 30 years. I'm just doing it all in in a kind of a different way. In a different way and taking it to another level, right? Mm -hmm. Because no one wants to do the same thing in the same way. At least you should. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that's what you're doing. You took those skills and you're you're doing them, but you're you've elevated them and changed the the delivery method or just the scope of it. And Mm -hmm. that's powerful. Yeah. You know, so you made it to Audible and now you're working with these amazing creators and you're turning out some really good work. Is there anything coming up that you can talk about that you love to share with us to look out for? There's so many things. I'm, I'm really excited. Again, I mentioned those two that we dropped this month, uh, Mastering the Skill of Reinvention with Pamela Mitchell and Major Frequency. Um, one of the things I'm really, two of the things I'm really excited about, we have Songs That Shook the Planet by Chuck D coming out. February. Oh, that's so cool. You know, he's a hip hop pioneer. We yeah. love him. And he's going to talk about um, the, sort of the, take us through the journey through politically and socially conscious music, which who better, right? Like, yeah. Who's better to take you through this journey. And I, I can't wait for everybody to hear it. And another one I'm really excited about is there for so many reasons, as um, called Quite the Contrary by Yvonne Durant, um, mm. who is a colleague of mine who I actually also co founded. Audible's Black Employee Network with wow. um, three years ago. Um, and she has a memoir coming out uh, about her time as one of the few Black women writing ads for major brands in the 70s and 80s. And the very unforgettable romance she had with Miles Davis in a story. Wow. Um, so it's it's a, a lot of that, but also primarily her coming of age story. Um, and it's, we like to joke and call it really that girl um, and, or Mary Tyler Moore with an African-American perspective. And it's just pretty amazing. That's awesome. Well, look, I'm excited that my content lives on Audible, not just my book. No thanks. Seven ways to say I'll just include myself. A guide to rockstar leadership for women of color in the workplace. But the Culture Soup podcast is also on Audible. And you'll be looking to hear Joni's audio book coming this spring, 2022. And you know what? There sound like there are other ways to engage with you guys. And I'm going to go for it. I think you should. <laughs> you didn't hear from me, but I think you should. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on the show again. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Abby. And you're doing such wonderful work. Where can people follow you online? You can follow me at Abby West NYC on Twitter. Awesome. Everybody, look for Abby West on Twitter and follow her. And then also go to Audible and see what they have to offer. It's audible.com. And if you're interested in getting your book on audio, go to acx.com. And you know what? I'll see you next time. Abby, I invite you to come back anytime you'd like. Anytime. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Find us online at theculturesoup.com, on Instagram and Twitter at The Culture Soup, and on Facebook at The Culture Soup Podcast. Until next time.
The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Size Communication, LLC. The Culture Soup Podcast is a registered trademark of No Silos Communications, LLC.